तो वेलकम बैक डियर चैम्पियंस लेट्स कैरी ऑन फ्रॉम वेयर आई स्टॉप इन द लास्ट लेक्चर एंड देयर आई टॉक टू यू अबाउट टॉट ऑन ए करेंट लूप एंड दैट लूप वॉज रेक्टेंगुलर ओके एंड वी फाउंड दैट देर इज ए मैग्नेटिक टाइपोल एसोसिएटेड विद इट which is equal to the current multiplied by the area vector so the vector m is equal to the current which is a scalar multiplied by the surface area vector uh, capital a <coughs> now we take a circular current carrying loop as a magnetic type okay. so let us see what we did for a current carrying loop we have done this okay we took a db here and then uh, one part perpendicular part and one along the x axis and we found that this perpendicular parts will cancel out each other because of the symmetry properties and these parts they will add up together because they are in the same direction ultimately ultimately what we found uh by applying the boy savala that the magnetic field was equal the magnitude of the magnetic field was equal to mu not i r square where r is the radius of this uh, uh, circular loop upon 2 x square plus r square raised to the power of 3 by 2 where x is taken from the center of this loop to this point p where the b has to be uh, calculated okay we found that for x is equal to 0 i got mu not sorry i got uh, this uh, mu not i upon because x was equal to 0 so 2 r cube okay so this is mu not i upon 2 r right and that is about the magnetic field at the center of the diagram but why what i'm uh, finding here that if my x is very very large as compared to r then this x square plus r square raised to the power of 3 by 2 r will vanish and this becomes equal to approximately x cube so i can write the value of the mag magnetic field at such a distance on the axis of this uh, circular loop okay to be mu not i r square upon 2 x cube and if i multiply the numerator and the denominator by pi then i get mu not i pi r square upon 2 pi x cube now this pi r square this is actually pi r square is equal to the area of the circular loop okay so i put it here and this becomes equal to mu not i a upon 2 pi x cube now i a as you know if a is taken as a vector this is here i say that i a is equal to m which is the magnitude of the vector m and i can write that m is equal to i a so the direction of m which is the magnetic dipole moment and the direction of a are acting to each other i have just shown the direction of magnetic uh, dipole moment and i have also this so both are in the same direction and therefore i can say that b cap is equal to m cap the cap vector we always take as a unit vector okay 
So this is what we obtain. Now, this is one recall. Then I want to make another recall. And that is the case of electric dipole. Okay? Electric dipole, I have minus Q and plus Q. This is minus Q and this is plus Q. Okay? The two charges. And the direction of the uh, electric dipole vector is from minus to plus and P is equal to 2A into one of the charges that is magnitude wise. Okay. From the center of this dipole, I choose the point P which I have shown to be at a very long distance away from it and this shows that the continuation has been broken but it is very long. Okay. So this is the kind of symbol we use uh, showing a big line, a large line, a long line, okay, like this. Then here at this point, we find on the axis of the dipole, we find that the electric field, the direction of the electric field is like this, which means that E cap is equal to P cap in the same direction. This is one thing. The other thing that we obtain for this case is, you can recall, you can go back, you can see, you can scribble it out and you will obtain this result. So this is E equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught, 2P upon X cube. 2P upon X cube. 2P upon X cube. And <coughs> What did I get here? Uh, I could have written this as equal to, sorry, as I could have written this as equal to mu naught upon 4 pi, mu naught upon 4 pi, okay, into 2m upon x cubed upon x cube and this is not dot this is multiplication so <coughs> i have written it here okay mu naught upon 4 pi into 2m upon x cube okay i ca can't see from a very short distance okay because i'm very close to the board and it reflects into my eyes okay so let us see that one expression is like this and the other expression is like this. And there is a correspondence between the two of them. Okay. See, so we find that on the axis of the dipole, uh, electric dipole, and also on the axis of the magnetic dipole, this will serve as a magnetic dipole. We get similar kind of relationship. Of course, it's proportional to a 1 upon x cubed. Okay. Which means that the value will, if I, I, if I plot, we plot E versus X, then this is going to vanish very fast, much fast. I've done that before, so go back to that point. So this is one point, okay. Now let's see that this is the same loop kind of thing which has a magnetic moment vector uh, coming out of it and when we find you can see that these lines are free they will go out and they will cross this line like this okay so b cap b cap and uh, m cap they will be opposite to each other b cap and m cap will be opposite to each other so i can say that in this case b cap is equal to minus uh, m cap b cap is equal to sometimes they don't function okay so thank you very much B cap is equal to uh, minus M cap. That is, they are opposite to each other. Okay? One is coming like this, the other is going. 
again to carry the analogy I will take the case of minus q and plus q and 2a between them and this is the p which is equal to 2a into q and at long distance away from the center I have an x and we found that the electric field on this line which is the equatorial line of the dipole are in the broadside on position we find that the value of E is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught P upon X cube. Okay. So here from this relation you can see this this is 2 P upon X cube and here it turns out to be equal to P upon X cube. So magnitude wise this is half the value of this at the same distance away from the center of the dipole uh, in the two directions. Okay. So what we find is by analogy, by analogy, we can say that this relation this relation nothing will work now. Okay. Okay, okay, I have got my friend. This will work, definitely. So this relation and this relation. Let us compare. Mu naught upon 4 pi, 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. Okay. So instead of mu naught, I have to write epsilon naught. P m. Okay. This is the magnitude only, and the, the here I have shown the vector. So mu naught m upon 4 pi x cube okay so this is the way the uh, loop is akin to a dipole and the values are also akin to the electric dipole okay in this case in the broadside down position it is p upon x cube and here in the same kind of a position is again m upon x cube whereas in the long side and position on the axis of the dipole I have uh, this 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 2p upon x cube and so here in this case it is mu naught upon 4 pi to 2m upon x cube complete similarity remember one the other can be recalled by you anytime if you are in a hurry to uh, attempt a one out of four answers questions which you call the subjective kind of oh I'm sorry objective kind of question okay but uh, mostly the objective questions in the market they are uh, not much of a question because there should be confusion in all the four or five uh, answers that are there and all the branches should correspond to the stem of the question. Now looking at this kind of a thing, okay, and what the intelligent man said, and Pierre, and Pierre, and he said, that all magnetism is due to circulating currents even the magnetism due to permanent magnets and this has to be borne in mind later on in the next chapter when we are talking about the magnetism magnetic materials etc then we talk in terms of some kind of a current and some kind of a magnetic dipole moment existing over there okay so next I'm going to again talk about the circular current that is the current carried by our friend Mr. Electron who goes around the Mr. Nucleus okay well, what kind of a dipole moment is associated with an electron moving around 
a positive nucleus. So the next item is the historical uh, magnetic moment vector associated due, due to a revolving electron, the electron which is supposed to be moving in a circular orbit about a very heavy uh, nucleus. Okay. And this theory was given for the first time by Neil Bohr. 1911 okay the, by that time we had a know of the charge on an electron and the board gave the theory for a very simple atom and that is initially we talked about uh, the hydrogen okay but it can be applicable to any any atom with a z number so that the charge over here in the center is equal to nuclear charge and that is plus Z E. Okay. But because Rutherford gave his model before Niels Bohr but uh, and there were many models which were uh, given but Niels Bohr came out with his beauty of model in which an electron is, as you can see, going anti-clockwise in this direction and therefore it comprises an electric current in the clockwise direction. And if so, then we find that the associated, uh, because this is going like this, therefore the associated uh, magnetic moment vector is into the board uh, as has been shown over here. Now, the model that he suggested and he applied was the planet sun model which is already available in uh, the Newton's uh, explanation of the planets going around the sun. Okay. So, let us see. This is the electronic charge E and if the time for a revolution, single revolution is equal to capital T, then I is equal to E upon T. Okay. So, uh, we can write T as equal to 2 pi R which is the circumference R being the radius divided by V which is the orbital speed of the electron. Okay. So, I can write therefore I is equal to E upon T it turns out to be equal to EV upon 2 pi R okay EV upon 2 pi R so this turns out to be equal to EV upon 2 pi R now we can define the magnetic dipole moment vector which you write as mu L okay as i into the area pi r squared so i can substitute the value of i ev upon 2 pi r into pi r squared and this i can write as uh, pi and pi will cancel and r will and r will cancel so this becomes equal to evr divided by 2 now if to this expression i multiply numerator and denominator by mass of the electron then I get E into MVR divided by 2M where this MVR as you can see this is MV is the linear moment of the system R is this and therefore from the relation that we have L is equal to P cross R, okay, where this is the angular momentum vector and this is the linear momentum vector and this is R, okay. So I can write this mu L as equal to E upon 2M into L, which is the angular momentum vector and I have written it as this is MVR. 
Now let's see. Mu L upon L. The ratio of the two magnitudes. Of course, we cannot write vector mu L divided by vector L. Why? Because division by a vector is haram. Okay, we cannot divide. It is not defined. And therefore, we get mu L upon L. The ratio of the two uh, scalars as E upon 2A. Now friends, E upon M is, I told you, this is the ratio of the charge to the mass of the electron and this is a constant. Okay. So this is also called the specific charge of an electron. So this becomes equal to if we calculate this turns out to be equal to 8.8 .8 into 10 to the power of 10 coulombs per kilogram which is a constant and it has been given a name gyromagnetic ratio okay next <coughs> after this thing has been done then Niels Bohr he uh, made a very intelligent proposal and he said that let our L be equal to NH upon 2 pi where N is a number 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. H is the Planck's constant and H upon 2 pi is also written as H cross. Okay? So L becomes equal to NH cross, NH cross. Now, this H is a beauty, was a game changer. Because this H came, I'll just tell you, in the last part of the 19th century. Okay. And before that, people thought that the physics has come to an end. Write very beautiful texts, very beautiful explanations, answer all questions, and the physics will be done. And Planck, he came out with the Planck's constant. Uh, we also know that uh, energy is equal to H nu. Okay, this is Planck's quantum. Okay. So, which also became a very, very uh, revolutionary concept in physics, which gave birth to many a science that followed, and that was uh, done vigorously by uh, maybe thousands of physicists till Neil Bohr was able to give this explanation. So, with that explanation, I am coming out. Okay. So. L is equal to an H cross, which is NH upon 2 pi, N is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And H is equal to the Planck's constant is 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second. Okay. This discreteness is Bohr's quantization condition. Okay, we are not going to indulge in that. The only thing that I am going to do for you is that if n is equal to 1 here then we find that the uh, mu L the minimum value of the uh, mu L which is actually the um, dipole moment character associated with that is equal to E H upon 4 pi M E naturally and so if I substitute the values 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19, 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34, 4 into 3.14 into, this is the mass of the electron, 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31, this turns out to be like this. Okay, if we put the value 2, this value will be twice, 3, thrice, etc, etc. I'm not going to indulge in, but I'm going to tell you, that only certain select orbits are allowed uh, which conform to the uh, angular, uh, I'm sorry, the 
dipole moment vectors associated with that and that way Bohr was able to uh, explain as to how the energy transfers take place from one of the discrete orbits to the other discrete orbit and when uh, the d excitement takes place then energy h nu is released etc etc and that way he was able to explain the uh, spectrum of the uh, hydrogen atom and other atoms etc and then a lot a lot a lot of work was done and the atomic spectroscopy was explained in terms of the model that was presented by Neil Bohr. So thank you very much. See you again in the next lecture. Okay.